one of the most important parts of my website, I would say, are the dreams and visions. You know, God promises in the book of Joel that he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. The book of Acts it is absolutely a, a first fulfillment of it. The second fulfillment of it is coming in dreams and visions. And I would say the other part is alerts, Dave, where I put up all of the most pertinent data that's coming in to me. And my books are available only through me. So many people have used them to effectively answer their questions. And once a workman or a student gets taught, then they can teach others. And what I believe the mercy of God has done through uh, the writings and the, the places he's led me is to help me to answer the hard questions. And, and uh, you know, again, weather wars, you've been referring to it, and I've been talking about it a little bit. When you talk about we own the, the weather 2025, that Air Force document is in my book along with the heart patent 486685 uh, the point is Bernard Eastland well, I, I've spent a lifetime at this so ladies and gentlemen I would encourage you the two books that you must absolutely get to understand what's going on is Genetic Armageddon Today's Technology Tomorrow's Monsters and obviously Weather Wars uh, and Unnatural Disasters these disasters are being generated they're being utilized and, and Dave I update my website I, I sometimes I try and sleep I'm a pathetic sleeper but usually it gets updated 18 hours a day. Uh, one of the other places that people like to go in all of the bad stuff, I've been a professional photographer for a number of years, and I try and put up the best photographs I've taken over the years just to remind people of what a great and glorious God we serve. I love uh, scenics and landscapes and waterfalls and all the neat stuff, and, and I'm trying to give a little bit of refreshing. I also put up the scripture of the day, which for the record I pray pray about, and the point is, is that I, I try and do, uh, what I can do is give people a glimpse of the world, I try and give them the most pertinent data, and also refresh their souls, because look, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, and some people don't take any time to listen to any words that proceed out of the mouth of God. By the way, I'm not ashamed of Jesus, he ransomed me, I've told my testimony on national radio and TV, and everything I write is so well researched and well documented that even my critics can't argue with my footnotes. So, ladies and gentlemen, understand that, uh, you know, it is a, a rare treasure, and I mean that. Uh, on my Genesis 6 Giants page, that's a whole separate website. Uh, the stuff I've pretty well known for across the world. I try and keep that up to date, and basically it will give you information from the past. You know, Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. All of the technology, if people understood that most of all modern warfare is based on the weaponry from the past, I'm not talking about gunpowder, I'm talking about uh, charged particle beams, I'm talking about the Indian text, Vedic, V-E-D-I-C, -E yes. text, yes. Uh, you know, Oppenheimer, the inventor of, or one of the scientists who invented the atom bomb, basically said he had become the destroyer of worlds, quoting specifically. What I've done, Dave, is basically tried to bring it all into focus, and I'm trying to teach those who have eyes to see and ears to hear. I'm trying to answer their questions so that when they go up against, uh, you know, what I would call pseudo-intelligence, they have the foundation. And that's why I get so much flack. One man told me there is nobody in the history of talk radio that's been knocked off or of the air or messed with more than you. And no, I, I agree. Well, I agree. And, and that's true. I'm not bragging. <laughs> I, no, true. listen, I, I've heard you many times where this has happened in other venues, and uh, it's already happened to yours truly tonight, and I'll count that as a hit in your column. Yeah. Uh, Steve, we got to go back out to the phones. We've got some people that are patiently um, waiting, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll cover the website again before we go off the air. And let's go out to uh, Shirley. From Minnesota, hi. You're on the Common Sense Show with Steve Quayle. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dave, for your program, for RBN, and, and what you're all doing and connecting the dots. Thank you, Steve Quayle, one of the greats that I've listened to on YouTube and around, along with Doug Camp, uh, or Hamp, and Marzulli and Tom Horn, and Chris Putman, and et cetera. All the dots are connecting. And I'm thinking, uh, great, before my questions, I have hundreds of questions, but before my question, how about a session with you on Skype or phone and sell raffle tickets, and then we could a ask, you know, more than just a couple questions. <laughs> uh, I've got to share this with you. I am so out of time. Right now I'm involved, real quick, 30-second quick version, with the most extensive investigation of all the legends of mm -hmm. both North and South.
South America. The name of the book is True Legends, uh, Tales from the Land of the Plumed Serpent. Uh, people get really mad when they find out that the very name America doesn't come from Americo Vespucci. So I, you know, I would consider that at some time a one-time deal. And, uh, you know, the thing is, I just, I know this sounds almost corny and I don't make excuses, but I find that I simply have no time and, uh, and, uh, you know, when I say this, I try and write for the most people and go on shows like Dave's. And I admire Dave. The reason I'm on the show is not that, again, flatter him, but I admire the stand he's taking. He does his homework. He's one of the best writers out there. And, Dave, you didn't ask me to say this, but obviously I can recognize. But also, I'm different than almost everybody else because I don't believe that this thing can be turned around politically. I don't believe this thing can be turned around proactively. I believe this is going to uh, be the time of distress of nations, that the United States is coming under divine judgment. I believe the Christians in this co country, especially the evangelicals, have showed such cowardice by not defending, standing up for Jesus. And you've got, and I'm not saying that Christians need to do this, but when the Muslims absolutely fill a void, it's because the Christians didn't take their grand ground or stand it right. Agree. I couldn't agree with that more. Shirley, quickly to your question. Two questions. Um, uh, Obama going to Israel on Wednesday and also about the new pope, what you feel about the prophecies coming up in Revelation according to those two things? Well, I'm probably one of the only guys prophetically that ever stated that I believe the day would come when Islam and Catholicism would merge. Mm -hmm. I was mocked by, I mean, incessantly, both by Catholics and Muslims. But here's the deal. The bottom line is the new pope is not the man everybody's trying to make him out to be. Right. I can only say this, and I am not a Catholic basher. I have more respect for Catholics who stand up for pro-life than cowardly Protestants that would never stand up for pro-life. I believe anybody that knows Jesus or personal Lord and Savior and loves God, that they are my brother and sister. And so I just want to make that clear. I can argue the history of the Catholic Church. I can argue the history of Islam. But at the end of the day, I want to talk to people about Jesus. Second of all, I believe that uh, the president going to Israel, I believe there's going to be a treaty cut. I believe that you cannot uh, combine darkness with light. And somebody said, remember this, as the head of the Democratic Party, he's riding in on the donkey. Right. Well, I've, I've never seen such contempt for Christians or Jesus from anybody who claims that sometimes to, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, speak favorably of the Christian church. You go on YouTube, there is none. Uh, obviously, by the uh, silence from the White House on the slaughter of Christians. Look, the tree is known by the fruit it bears. You know, some people say, well, judge not, let you be not judged. That's not even what the scripture says. Paul said, they who are discerned are spiritual, discern all matters. You, you know, obviously, just look at the fruit. If there's no fruit of righteousness, the root is corrupt. So I expect something very dark, very evil to take place in Jerusalem. I believe the, uh, the, the people have got to understand Jerusalem is the uh, cause. It's not because I'm a Zionist to say this. It's because I'm a Biblicist. There's a good word. Uh, a pragmatist at that. A historian. The fact is, is that the devil will occupy the seat that Jesus is going to occupy through the millennium prior to Jesus' second coming. So all of the powers of the world are trying to make the seat of Lucifer absolutely the ultimate affront to the living God. And God allows it. And for the record, those people are looking for the temple to be built. They could haul out the tabernacle, bring out the ark, and they could do it in a matter of hours. And that would flabbergast all of the uh, dispensationalists. They'd probably right. have to go. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Steve. In fact, you're right about the Luciferians, too, because it was uh, David Spencer. Spangler, uh, head of the Eco Initiative, who said, no one shall come to the New World Order unless they pledge an allegiance to Lucifer. And that Absolutely. is a quote. And on that note, Shirley, we got a bit of do. Um, and we need, thanks so much for your call. And we need to move on. And uh, let's welcome uh, Dirk calling in from an unknown location. Hi, Dirk. Welcome to the show. Hi. Um, Any gentlemen, great show. Thank you. <laughs> um, Annie wanted me to address the one aspect of uh, HARP and the chemtrails that uh, tie in with each other to uh, basically take advantage of the uh, mind control aspects of HARP. Are you familiar with that, Steve? Yes, I am. Yeah, Dane Wigington of um, uh, was a geoengineeringwatch.org finally uh, addressed it on Coast to Coast a few nights ago. <clears throat> I worked with someone back in the 80s uh, who was an etheric surgeon 
and he basically studied the uh, Russian transmitters, uh, the ELF transmitters, by going out of body and going to the places. And um, a lot of his work was confirmed by Colonel Tom Bearden. He also worked with uh, Bill Tiller and uh, Norm Sheely. Well, we found out that there were also 40 transmitters inside the U.S. <clears throat> on military bases, and they were working in conjunction with the Russians to develop specific frequencies they could be transmitted to transmit anything from uh, diseases. Uh, they'd use the virus signatures or bacterial signatures, the frequencies. Are you talking about race-specific weapons? Um, no, these are uh, scalar wave weaponry. What, he, what he's talking about is that you can basically use any form of energy or specific forms of energy as a carrier wave to induce electromagnetic thickness. Yeah. In essence, that's what the Russians were doing when they were beaming... Uh, all their different frequency weapons at the U.S. Embassy and people were getting sick. It's to the science now that they can basically articulate resonance and pretty much everything has a resonance. Every atomic element, every cell, every membrane, every component. And once you parallel or overrule or actually override that frequency, you can induce such uh, subatomic trauma. You can do it. So what the gentleman is talking about, Dave, is, is that, uh, you know, they don't need to basically come up and jab you with an umbrella tip anymore with, let's say, plutonium as they, as they murdered the spy Georgie Markov. The bottom line is, is they can basically RFID you, radio frequency, uh, to actually radio frequency target you and use different forms of not just scalar energy, but there are so many forms of energy that Black physics basically teaches their adepts, meaning if you're an Illuminati physicist, you get the real word, world, and if you're not an Illuminati physicist, you get the same old stuff. There's a whole world out there that goes beyond what the average college-level physicist or even a Ph.D. in physics is allowed access to. Yeah, I worked at uh, UC Irvine. I was a, a biomedical research tech. Before that, I was in electronics. Uh, okay, so, I, so you understand that a bio See, very few, it's kind of interesting because you're kind of a composite guy that's got expertise in both fields. Yeah. When you get someone who understands, obviously, the field of electronics, and then they understand, obviously, you know, the biomedical ramifications. I mean, it was like Albert Becker, the body electric, and uh, Royal Rife, the American Medical Association, just Same destroyed thing. that man. Yeah. But these guys knew this stuff, what, 50, 75 years ago? Yeah. Along with Jose Delgado and mind control. You got it. Yep. Yep. Now, the thing is, Dane Wigington finally made the connection and said the aluminum that we're breathing in from the uh, chemtrails yes, sir. is making us more susceptible to these frequencies. They can actually target whole cities and uh, broadcast the um, frequencies for fear, panic, things like that, as well as diseases, specific diseases. So they can bring down a whole city just, you know, by broadcasting the um, we, we have a, it works right at the uh, mid-range of our uh, brain waves, 10 pulses per second. Well, what they do is they piggyback a microwave carrier, and the frequencies are so specific that they can broadcast a frequency for panic that most everybody will entrain. It's brain entrain, brainwave entrainment, <clears throat> kind of like uh, Robert Monroe's acoustic brainwave. Brain right, wave. and you're absolutely correct, and most of the cell phone towers are not cell phone towers. That's exactly right. And that's right. the grid pattern, and that's what they're going to do. See, that's why the word zombie, and Dave, I, I did, and God bless her, Sue Bradley, for all you out there, please keep her in your prayer. She's fighting for her life, and it's, it's, she's, but she wrote the most important piece on zombies, and here's the deal. The New World Order and the Luciferians call us zombies because they're feeding us basically everything to uh, initiate, if you will, a electrochemical attack in which everybody goes crazy. Yes, I've been told that by my FEMA contacts that went into seclusion, and it's going to come through two sources, HARP and the smart meters. Yep. Yeah, I've known this since I was 14. I had some revelations. And Hey, by the way, caller, if you've got my email, if you'd be so kind, if you would like to write something, I'll keep your identity hidden, you know, just the, but I would love you to write something from your field. And, and look, I'm not trying to, you know. Oh, I, don't, uh, I don't care. They've known about me since I was 14. Yeah, but I'd love you to write something and bring it up to speed because, again, the bottom line is, is that is it subhertz puts you to sub four, puts you to sleep, and over six agitates? Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I hear too. Yeah. And Dirk, I believe Annie has your contact information. Is that correct? Oh yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, send me send me an email if you would, and I'll correspond with you through email. And I want to thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Fantastic call, and Dirk. I'm going to be in touch too because it sounds like we need to get you on the show. Yeah. Annie wants me to. <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, thank you. Dirk. Okay. Thanks, Dirk. Yeah, we just got a few seconds here before we go to break, but Steve, you can tell we, we don't have ordinary callers here. Um, we have highly intellectual, intelligent people who care deeply about this country and what's happened to it. And I do have to agree, I concur with you. Uh, whatever happens with our country, it's going to have to be rebuilt. I totally concur that this country is lost. Well, I think there will be a remnant, Dave, and the remnant is that which remains, okay? Well, it depends how many of us are left to pick up the pieces, too. Yep. Well, if they have their way, they'd like to put us in pieces, but God has the <laughs> final say, you know. Yeah, I, I hear exactly what you're saying. Um, I don't want to jump into another call here before we go to our last break, and uh, we have time maybe for one more quick call lasting about a minute. But, uh, Steve, I know you don't do a lot of appearances, but I would sure deem it an honor if you'd come back on again this summer because uh, we needed to double the length of this interview. We, I feel like we're just getting started. Well, let me just share one thing, and I want you to listen to the uh, – Doug Hagman invited me to go on Tuesday, and I'm going to preach and share some of the things I've held back. I, I, I've been, you know, holding back some stuff, not, not – intel or anything but uh, i mean god's given me the hardest message he's ever given me and he told me to do it i'm going to be on doug hagman doug hagman homeland security us dot com doug named that after 9 11 i wish he would uh change the name but the point is uh hagman and hagman it's on from seven to ten mountain uh you can go to homeland security us i'll put the link up on my website and what's important about this one is believe it or not i know this sounds crazy but i really am reluctant to do radio shows but jesus told the parable and i'm not you know saying whoopee i'm just saying jesus told the parable about two guys one said he would do the will of god and didn't do it and one said he wouldn't do it and did do it and then jesus asked a simple question which one did the will of god and i was in the shower today and the lord downloaded instantly into my spirit it didn't go to my head it went to my heart i'm not trying to sound spiritual but he gave me the words out of the book of daniel where daniel the handwriting on the wall the finger of god and he quotes me me tekel ufsarim which thou are weighed in the balances and found wanting this night, you know, your kingdom is torn from you. And, and, and God spoke to my heart in such a way. He said, tell my people in no uncertain terms that my hand of judgment is now in full effect. I said, Lord, I don't want to do that. And I really did, Dave. I'm sorry, but I told the Lord that. And I said, but I will do what you ask me to do because obedience is better than sacrifice. When I came to Jesus, my favorite song was trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. So I'm going to give it. It's going to be hard hitting. I'm going to tell people what's in store for them. The reason I can't talk about it is because it caused me to cry. When I came to Jesus, I saw the end time events. The Lord told me he was going to seal it up, and I would only have it recalled as the time for its fulfillment was quickly upon us. And I'm telling you, brother, I hate it. I hate it because because I wish that people could have stood up, that they would have taken up their, their crosses, if you will, that they would have absolutely done everything they could to withstand evil. But alas, I'm to the point where saying, Lord, only you can defend your people. I'll do what you ask, and I praise God for all the men like yourself and others especially Hawk and Greg Evenson and those men who are standing up for the Lord Jesus first and foremost, but also calling, you know, sin, sin, and wickedness, wickedness. So that'll be 7 to 10, Mountain Time, Hagman and Hagman. Do you know if the archives it, Steve? Yeah, it's also archived. Okay, good. Um, because I have a commitment that night, but I'm yeah, sure yeah, you're going to listen to the archives. And, yeah, let, let me squeeze you. in one quick call, caller. Yeah. He's hung on. Let's go to Barry. Barry, you got about 30 seconds. Hey, Dave and Steve. Oh, okay. Uh, did you... Go ahead. Okay, uh, Dave and Steve, uh, did you hear about the uh, FBI uh, center in West Virginia? They had an intel brief with uh, FBI agents and secretaries, and uh, this, this colonel was, uh, it was tw they had, they're going to get 24 new armored vehicles, 20 uh, mobile uh, headquarters tra tractor trailers. And then he said that they had a list of all the Patriot groups of those that they're going to uh, get. And when the people were done with the meeting, 
they, they said uh, people were complaining, shaking their heads in disbelief and asking what the heck is going on. According to them, nobody, including the federal agents present, plan on going along with this, and many even talked about how this will ignite a war. Okay, we're just about out of time. Monday. Steve, that kind of, yeah, I, I hear you, and I, I read that. Steve, I'm sure you've read it. And, Steve, we're flat out of time. I'd like to get your response. Barry, thanks so much for that statement. But, um, Steve, we've got to do this again, and I'm certainly going to catch you on Tuesday night. I want to thank you for running my series on the Gulf. Uh, feel free to post.